Uh, Christine Groh is our guest from the Coalition for Medicare Choices. Christine, good morning. Thank you for being with us. This is Rob along with Bill. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me today. Well, we appreciate you uh, taking some time to be with us to talk about this. Uh, We have, uh, obviously, in West Virginia, it is uh, a state with an elderly population as a percentage that is greater than most states uh, in America. And uh, Medicare is something that uh, they need to know about uh, firsthand and rolling in it uh, about to or already on it. So let's talk about the Coalition for Medicare Choices. What is your purpose as an organization? The Coalition for Medicare Choices represents millions of seniors across America who choose Medicare Advantage for their health care coverage. And what they find is when they become eligible to make their choices about what sort of Medicare coverage they want, they find Medicare Advantage delivers better services, better access to care, and better value. It gives them great benefits at a very strong savings. And we come together every year to let Washington know that Medicare Advantage should be protected for their health care. Many of us are aware of Medicare and what it is and what it does, but when you throw the word advantage on the end of it, we say to ourselves, what is the difference between Medicare and Medicare Advantage? When you become eligible for Medicare, which happens when you turn the age of 65 or if you have certain disabilities or physical illnesses like end-stage renal disease, you have a choice. You can choose to purchase original Medicare, which is Medicare Part A and Part B. Part A covers hospitalization costs and Part B covers doctor visits. If you choose both of those, you can also choose Medicare Part C, which is Medicare Advantage. And Medicare Advantage is a partnership between the federal government and private health insurance providers who compete every single year to offer our seniors lower prices, lower premiums, and better benefits, things like dental coverage, hearing coverage, vision care, uh, things like prescription drug coverage for a lot of these plans, um, wellness programs, care coordination, which is especially important with for people with uh, chronic diseases like heart disease or diabetes. These are a lot of important services that people very much want access to, and Medicare Advantage delivers for them. I have to sign up for Medicare or else I can incur a penalty. Do I have to sign up for Medicare Advantage? You do not have to sign up for Medicare Advantage. It is completely your choice. Uh, And we fully support people choosing the kinds of coverage that's right for them and their families. And how are these plans? uh, Medicare, obviously, we we have money taken out of our paychecks while we of working age uh, to fund Medicare. Whether it's enough or not uh, is a mathematical formula. Uh, How is Medicare Advantage funded? Medicare Advantage is funded in part by the federal government, uh, as well as through premiums that people may pay on a monthly basis. What we do find, however, is that most seniors have access to a very affordable plan. The average premium for a Medicare Advantage plan is just $18 a month, which is a number that just continues to go down every single year. And a lot of seniors have access to a Medicare Advantage plan for $0 additional premium above what they would pay for original Medicare. So it's a great value for a lot of folks. Um, One of the things that we're letting people know about right now is right now the federal government is making decisions about funding Medicare Advantage for next year. And we are very concerned that what we're seeing represents a cut to the program that means that more than 30 million seniors who choose Medicare Advantage today will see uh, either the premiums go up or their benefits reduced. Bill. Yeah. uh, So your group is is organized in part to oppose health care reform, especially the Medicare part of it. Is that correct? So we're really focused on Medicare Advantage, which is the public-private partnership part. Um, We're not opposed to reform. What we're really focused on is ensuring that Medicare Advantage remains strong in terms of the value, so ensuring that seniors can continue to enjoy affordable premiums and the benefits that they prefer. Um, And what we find is this is a really bipartisan issue uh, and has been historically In fact, both Senators Capito and Manchin signed on to a letter to the administration this year telling them that they believe Medicare Advantage is a really important choice for seniors and should be protected. So your coalition for Medicare Choices is focused uh, totally on Medicare Advantage, correct? That's right. Yes. Okay, I misunderstood that reading the uh, uh, your, the press release. Uh, so uh, uh, 
who's what's where's the threat coming from from Medicare Advantage? Because I'm hearing from you the same thing I've been hearing from other people. It is one of the better uh, medical insurance policies we can possibly get. Yeah, it's, right now it's coming from the federal government. Uh, there's an agency called the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Choices that uh, issues what they call an advance notice every year about how they're going to fund Medicare Advantage for the following year. So this won't affect plans for 2023, but it surely will affect choices for 2024. So we've been asking our seniors to reach out to the White House to let them know that these plans should be protected. Uh, It's really the administration that we want people to reach out to. Uh, Your senators and and members of the House can also be helpful in reaching the White House, Um, but there's it's a very important time to reach out now to the end of March. How, how many? How much federal dollars are going into Medicare uh, to supplement Medicare Advantage? I don't have that figure right off the top of my head, but I do know that Medicare Advantage uh, provides a lot more value and savings over original Medicare. We've actually seen studies that have been done that show that if you compare original Medicare and Medicare Advantage on an apples to apples basis. What you find is you get huge savings. Um, and so those savings, both for seniors as well as for taxpayers, it really deserves to be protected. Okay, so uh, uh, Medicare Advantage specialists, uh, I, I'm, I'm speaking uh, without a lot of knowledge, uh, but for individuals cannot afford other uh, Medicare supplement policies. Uh, Medicare Advantage would fill that role. Is that correct? Well, yeah, I mean, Medicare supplement is also another choice that people have so that you would typically choose just original Medicare um, or original Medicare with Medicare supplement or original Medicare with Medicare Advantage. So the good news about the American health care system is there there are a lot of choices for people to select a plan that's right for them. Um, So Medicare supplement is just another flavor of choice in the Medicare program. Let's follow that road just a little bit. What would be the advantage of Medicare Advantage over some of the other supplemental choices? We feel that Medicare Advantage um, bundles very easily with original Medicare, and it feels very much like a lot of the health care coverage that people are used to getting through their jobs. Because Medicare Advantage tends to provide so much coverage that, that people really want to have access to, uh, I mentioned some of them earlier, but just to kind of go through them, it's um, things like dental, vision, and hearing services. It's things like prescription drug coverage. It's coordination of care. It's access to preventive services, like access to screening and vaccines and testing that a lot of seniors need. The really remarkable thing about Medicare Advantage is that senior voters who choose it are overwhelmingly satisfied. In fact, 94% of them are satisfied with their Medicare Advantage coverage, and 93% say they would recommend it to family and friends. So that's, um, those are some really rare, very high satisfaction numbers that you just don't see with other products. And Medicare Advantage is available only if you're uh, 65 and, or older. Is that correct? That's right. You have to be eligible for Medicare to choose a Medicare Advantage plan. Christine Grill is our guest here, Senior Vice President for Communications AHIP, America's Health Insurance Plans. And uh, with the Coalition for Medicare Choices here, we're talking about uh, Medicare Advantage plans, which, according to the information that we've been provided, 43% of West Virginians have selected a Medicare Advantage plan, and that is up from 26% just five years ago, Christine. Is that accurate? That's absolutely right. So that's about 175,000 residents within West Virginia. Um, And that's about what those percentages are about what we see nationally. Um, We're seeing that nearly half of all people who are eligible for Medicare are choosing these plans. uh, And that's because of the value that they see. Um, So we think it's a a really important part of America's health care coverage landscape. We hear statistics that Medicare itself is running out of money, as is Social Security, in terms of the trust fund. So when I see this statistic and the information provided to me, Medicare Advantage premiums for 2023 have decreased another 8%, dropping to an average premium of just $18 per month. How can that be? 
Yeah, you know, so the original Medicare program is funded out of the trust fund. Medicare Advantage is actually separate and distinct. So when you see things like the Medicare trust fund going bankrupt or, you know, running out of money by a certain time, that's really kind of separate from the Medicare Advantage plan. We do agree that you need to make the best use of every single dollar that gets put into health care. So what we find is, um, with Medicare Advantage scoring just better on clinical outcomes, people staying healthier. Uh, in fact, um, Medicare Advantage scores stronger in 16 out of 16 clinical quality measures, which just means that the doctors and hospitals are working with the health insurance providers to implement better services. And what we find, in fact, is when they do that for Medicare Advantage members, they also adopt those same practices for original Medicare members, which means all of our seniors are just getting better care and better value. The discussions involving Medicare, they often talk about we need to free up the bidding for competition to help lower prices. Does Medicare Advantage already subject itself to competitive pricing? It sure does. Medicare Advantage is uh, a plan, uh, an offering that is um, with health, private health insurance providers who work with the federal government. They submit their products and bids to the federal government every year for review. So they are very carefully over, um, overviewed and administered. And those health insurance providers, because they want to win your business, will compete very, very hard for the services that they provide, the access they provide, and the lower costs that they offer you. So it's a very competitive market with a lot of different choices. And, you know, that's American market competition at its best. Could that also work for Medicare? Well, it's interesting that you say that because in our view, as more and more Americans choose Medicare Advantage, it's naturally moving to a more competitive environment. So when you get to the point when you have more than 50 percent of those eligible for Medicare choosing this public-private partnership, you know, we're really moving to a much more competitive market naturally. So that's another reason why we think Medicare Advantage should be protected. There's a lot of talk now about uh, health care reform. Uh, is Medicare Advantage being caught up with this, uh, with this talk about reform in, in the health services and the health cost? Or is, there, or is Advantage uh, having a special bullseye placed on its back? Or is it caught up with all the other activities? Yeah, that's a really good question. And when you talk about health care reform, we don't see the calls for dramatic overhaul for Medicare Advantage like we've seen historically in some other areas on a large scale. Um, and I think one of the reasons for that is because the federal government does look at Medicare Advantage plans every year. They put out proposed rules and, and different regulations to improve the plans year over year. So that as we learn more about what works better in healthcare, we're already organically improving. It's just built into the system. You know, what we find is Medicare Advantage is working the way Congress intended when they put these plans into place, which is why it's had such strong bipartisan support. Can there be improvements made to all kinds of health care coverage? Absolutely. Uh, and we think that that is already happening. We should build on what we have and improve on what we have. And Medicare Advantage is a prime example of something that's working very, very well for Americans today. Why is it under threat now then? We, we think it's a, a, we're not really sure why we're seeing such pressure right now from the administration because of the strong bipartisan support and because we have more than 30 million Americans on these plans. That's why, you know, we think it's important for the White House to be reminded these seniors think Medicare Advantage is really important. Do members of Congress, the House, the Senate, the White House, once they turn 65, do they also have to sign up for Medicare, Christine? You know, that's a really good question. I don't know the answer specifically to the rules that govern um, members of Congress, um, but happy to get back to you with that another time if I can. It would be interesting to know. I, I would presume that they have to, but I don't know that for a fact. And if they have to, yeah. then I would presume that they have a pretty good understanding of what that maze is like. And uh, I, I've heard many of the elected officials say that their parents draw Social Security and are on Medicare, and they would never do anything to adversely affect 
Social Security or Medicare as a result of that. Yeah, I think that's an, an important point. Whether or not our direct members of Congress have Medicare or Medicare Advantage, they certainly know people who do. Um, we know from experience that, um, you know, children and loved ones are often helping their parents make decisions about health care coverage and what makes sense for them. So you likely know somebody who's who has Medicare Advantage or has been working through making that choice. I have a question for you. One of our audience members asks, what are overall deductibles yearly of Medicare Advantage Part D versus supplemental coverages? And then you put Part G with a question mark. Uh, are you uh, versed enough in, in that to give them an idea what the overall deductibles might be? So these are going to vary plan by plan. Um, so in these kinds of situations, it sounds like somebody may be thinking about their own choices. Um, there are different people that you can call to get some guidance. First, if you want to learn more about the Medicare program, both Original Medicare and Medicare Advantage, you can go to the federal government's website. It's Medicare.gov, and it's got a lot of really easy to understand information about the program. When you get down to these specific choices, um, if you don't have information that's available through that website, you can also call a local broker who are certified and very knowledgeable about the different plans that are available in your area and can sit down and talk about your personal preferences, the doctors you want to see, the hospitals you want to go to, the medications that you'd like to see covered, just to make sure that you're making it a choice that's right for you. And and I think your, your um, person writing in is absolutely right. When you think about affordability, it's not just the premium that you may pay each month, it's also the deductible and what you may pay for a doctor visit, for a hospital visit, or for a medication. Do you, along with the rest of us, I wonder, depending what channel you're watching, see those Joe Namath commercials come on about Medicare Advantage and uh, other older trusted actors and athletes uh, who were popular in their in their prime, and they, they, they're selling you a Medicare Advantage pitch on your television. Is that a trustworthy way to find out more about Medicare Advantage plans? Yeah, I think this has been a really big concern for folks, especially over the past several months. And we are um, very focused and, and very supportive of ensuring that people get the information that they need. Um, we do not support misleading marketing and advertising. We do think people should know about their choices, but they should have access to the information that they need to make a choice that's right for them. Um, when it comes to some of these marketing practices by third-party marketing organizations like what you're talking about, the good news is the government did take action on that last year to put some additional rules and regulations in place to stop a lot of that activity. So they went into effect for this year, and we're very hopeful and confident that they will go a long way to protecting consumers and protecting seniors. Yeah. You mentioned uh, going to someone local for advice. We're fortunate enough to have those type of individuals in the area, one of which appears on the stock show uh, on a, a couple so times a week. Uh, uh, that uh, is a font of good information. John Bodwell. John Bodwell. Bodwell right, and yeah. Associates. Uh, I'm st going back a little bit. I'm uh, This uh, why is it under fire? Uh, if you sign up for a, a Medicare Advantage, you you pay for it. You pay something. Uh, how much of that, how much federal dollars comes in to match what the individual pays? I know it's not a simple number, but can you give me a rough, a rough percentage? So I don't have an exact budgetary figure for what the government spends on, on Medicare Advantage. I'm more focused on the seniors and the people with disabilities and what they may pay. Um, and again, what we find for tw for this year, for 2023, the premiums decreased by another 8% over previous years, so it's just $18 a month. Um, we do know that inflation and rising costs are an increasing concern for seniors. 76% say recent reports of inflation uh, have led them to be concerned about uh, cuts to the program. Um, and, you know, regardless of the the choices, you know, I think for lower income Americans, this is a very important choice with 40 percent of enrollees making less than twenty five thousand a year. We still believe it's a very good value for taxpayers, because, again, when you compare original Medicare and Medicare Advantage on an apples to apples basis, you get significant savings with Medicare Advantage. So we just think that that is the wave of the future for the Medicare program. Christine Grove, final word is yours. 
we encourage people to reach out to the White House and let them know to protect. Uh, it's important to protect Medicare Advantage for the more than 30 million seniors who rely on it. If you want to find out more information about our coalition, you can visit, visit us at medicarechoices.org. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Very much appreciated. Thanks so much for having me. Very informative. Thank you. Thank Christ- you. Christine Grove from the Coalition for Medicare Choices.